Red Sharks IBC coverage is brought to you by Matrox, Simply, and VizRT. Hey Klaus. Hey there. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Um, I guess nothing new from Sony. Ah, oh, nothing new. Come on in. I show you what is new. We have loads of things in there. Come on, guys. So what do we have here? Well, this is the FR7, the new FR7. It's the first pan-filled zoom camera with a full-frame sensor and interchangeable lens. So you can use any E-mount lens on that camera and control it pan-filled zoom. So imagine, for example, you would be in a, in a stage environment on a music concert. You will have this on the, um, in the ceiling or just next to the drummer. You can control that camera, have shallow depths of field and uh, create uh, cinematic images by using a pan tilt zoom camera. That's the first there is in the world. Yeah, because normally a uh, pan tilt zoom camera is, does not have those types of qualities, right? Correct. Like you usually have a smaller sensor, a fixed lens. Here you have the freedom of using any kind of e-mount lenses. Um, you have the freedom of choosing um, wide angle or a telephoto lens, can control that remotely. Um, with the great quality of um, um, our, our cinema line and it's actually sitting, sitting within the cinema line. That means if you are, your other camera is an FX3 or FX6, you can easily blend that together with that camera using S-Cinetone, S-Log3, um, it easily blends together. So that means that also from a continuity perspective, using all these different types of cameras together, is basically quite seamless, I guess? Absolutely. Um, you can use the same lens that you use on the FX6, also on the FR7. Um, the recording, actually that's the first pencil zoom camera that also records internally. And it's not only for live production, but it's also internal recording. That means um, with the same file format as the FX6, you can blend these, uh, the, the content together. Build-in ND filters, you can control remotely. The output is obviously um, by either SDI, you can use SRT for streaming, RTMP, and even NDI HX as streaming format inside of that camera. You, you, you can control that camera by a touchscreen uh, interface that we have here. And inside of the camera, you have um, uh, the um, well-known and uh, really good um, autofocus system tracking your eye or even tracking an object. So for example, if I just simply touch the, uh, the screen here, it will track your face. And if you're moving inside of that image, then the focus will remain on your, your, um, your face. Um, very clear interface, directly um, um, buttons for bringing up uh, features, um, preset positions you can um, simply um, uh, go to via a double click. So very easy uh, control of this FR7 device. So this is a really, really versatile tool. It's a really versatile tool that will open new things because yeah, nowadays um, a lot more is done remotely, um, but you need to have this cinematic look. And that's exactly what we are doing with the FR7. I must say, Klaus, this is probably the first pencil zoom camera I'm actually really excited about. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go over there. So Klaus, I know these cameras. Definitely movie cameras. That's the Venice. Venice 2 actually. And the brand new Rialto 2 or Venice extension unit uh, that we just launched uh, yesterday. Now supporting the 8K sensor of the Venice 2. And the cable in between the, um, the, the sensor block and the camera itself can be up to 12 meters. So you can extend the, the, the sensor in the full quality up to 12 meters in car shots or anything in aeroplanes as there was a famous movie just um, recently shot by this camera and also using the Rialto extension. Now with the gyroscopic uh, sensor built in, further uh, touch buttons. So this is the high end, the top of the so-called cinema line, which uh, there were, um, we just talked about the FR7, the pan shield zoom camera. And that's actually one part of the cinema line um, uh, in sharing the uh, full frame sensor, sharing the um, versatility of control. So you can choose wherever, um, whatever tool is the right thing for you. If you need a very small compact camera or if it goes up to high end cinema cameras, um, it's all inside of this um, cinema line.
it makes for just so many more possibilities. Indeed, you can choose your tool depending on the need that you have. Perfect. So, what's next? So, let's go over there, virtual production, a cool thing. So this is a set. This is a cool stuff. This is virtual production. Actually, again, using the Venice 2 camera to capture um, a, a content that we have created here. You see a window in the background, and this window, uh, the background of the window is actually um, an LED screen. Um, the Sony Select crystal LED screen, especially made for virtual production. We are um, using the camera. Um, the camera is tracked in space. The content is sent to an Unreal Engine. And in, inside of the Unreal Engine, you can complete a, a virtual set where um, that is indeed virtual. So what we are doing now is changing the night scene that we have here, Tokyo night scene, to a day scene. Please. Now we are changing the light. Suddenly, you are at, at daylight within the instant of a second. You can move the camera, and the background will change as well. So you can easily create content that is, is very um, um, versatile. You can be quick in shooting. You don't have to move yourself. You can change the background and be very flexible in any kind of production space. This is amazing. It's actually quite hard to capture the screen. At the same time? Because of yeah. the fact that it looks so good. It looks so good, yeah. <laughs> and you, you so it's really actually hard to explain. Guys, this is the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, then you know that it works because it's, it feels like a real image, although we are here in Amsterdam and not in Tokyo or like in, in the, at the beach side in Japan. <laughs> this is actually not real-time content from Unreal Engine, but, uh, but content that we captured with the, the Venice 2 at the beach and actually in Denmark. And it's now used in this scene to be at a beach side um, restaurant in Japan, for example. Amazing. So, content is king. We have seen with our cameras just before. But how do you actually get this content back to the viewers? How can you monetize it, be quick enough to get this uh, in front of people? And this is where um, Creators Cloud will help you. Creators Cloud is actually a tool set of tools that will help creators use the content that created and getting this um, across into the cloud. Inside of our camcorders, we have a, a built-in um, streaming device and capture device for files. So every time you press the record button, a file is created and is uploaded automatically into the cloud. You will see up here, that's the user interface of um, all the content that is arriving in the cloud. You can then pass it on and do the direct editing, for example. So instantly, whenever this is recorded here, somebody um, um, at a remote location can see getting all the content in, start the editing, and publish this online on Facebook or wherever you want to do. So this is by streaming, but also, very important, by files. So the news that we're showing this year is the support of the Teradec um, input device. So th from the Teradec, you can um, transfer the files directly into C3P, our uh, camera-connected uh, portal, or into C Media Cloud. C Media Cloud is a, is a tool to collaboratively um, work on content together. You can annotate things, put comments on that, do some um, processing, and then push this on further into post. So all, uh, the whole um, world of uh, cloud is opening for you from camera into the cloud.